This video is sponsored by Wing Wing Technology, your ultimate fly sim hardware solution. Featuring the Orion Holtes, current and future configurations. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're carrying on with our series of testing the maximum practical kinematic range of the missiles in DCS World, the air-to-air -air missiles. So, so far we've done the R-37, the AIM-54A Mark 60, the Meteor from the Gripen, the AIM-120C5. We do actually have access to the C6 and the C7 on some planes, but they just don't work properly. The coding doesn't work, so we've just given up with them. And today we're doing the AIM-120D Super. I don't want to say futuristic because it is in service, but about the newest and most powerful missile you can get. The reigning champion is the Russian R-37 missile. It is a Fox 3 type missile. It had a range tested by us of 155 nautical miles. And the limiting factor is the initial radar lock. Now, note that these will not tally up with real life perfectly because we can do things in DCS, obviously, that you cannot do in real life. We can fly massive planes with giant radar cross sections to massive altitudes and use them as dummies. You can't do that in real life. And we can have our fighters that fire these missiles at the absolute edge of the envelope with no fuel in at all to make them kinematically superior to anything you could have in real life. That said, the R-37 came out very realistically. We got it to a maximum of 155 nautical miles. The actual record, we believe, in real life with the massive drone that the Russians tested was 162 nautical miles. And we just have to assume that that is true and accurate. So before we go and just sling an AIM-120D at someone, we really need to understand how this missile works or just a bit of theory about it because I don't know anything about it. So the AIM-120D is an upgraded version of the AMRAM with improvements in almost all areas including 50% greater range, that's going to be really interesting, than the already extended range AIM-120C7 and better guidance over its entire flight envelope yielding an improvement in kill probability. Raytheon began testing the D model in August 2008. Wow, that was ages ago. The company reported that an AIM-120D launched from an FA-18F Super Hornet passed within lethal distance of a QF-4 target drone at the White Sands missile range. So they have kind of dud warheads on, they don't actually explode. The range of the 120D is classified, but it is thought to extend to about 100 nautical miles. The AIM-120D Phase 4, formerly known as the AIM-120 AIM-120C8 is a development of the AIM-120C with a two-way data link, more accurate navigation using GPS-enhanced IMU, an expanded no-escape envelope and improved high off bore sight capability. Max speed is Mach 4 and AIM-120D is a joint Air Force-Navy project. It's currently in the testing phase. The USN was scheduled to field it from 2014 and AIM-120D will be carried by all Pacific carrier groups by 2020, which is a year ago. Although the 2013 sequestration cuts could push this back to later date 2022. The Royal Australian Air Force requested 450 AIM-120D missiles, which would make it the first foreign operator of the missile. The procurement, approved by US government in April 2016, with a cost of $1.1 billion and will be integrated for use on the FA-18F Super Hornet, the Growler and the F-35 Lightning. There was also plans for Raytheon to develop a ramjet-powered derivative of the AMRAM, the future medium-ranged missile. FM RAM was not produced since the target market. The British Ministry of Defence chose the Meteor woo, over the FM RAM for BBR missile for the Eurofighter Typhoon. So the main thing I've learned is that this is not a ramjet powered missile which i actually thought it was so my bad also it's limited to mach 4 which confuses me how can if it does not have a ramjet and it can only do mach 4 which is basically the same as pretty much all the other missiles how can it go so far what's its secret tech uh, i'd love to know your thoughts on that i'm sure some of you may know the answer the test we'll be doing today is the only aircraft we've got in dcs that can fire it is of course the f-22a raptor it's in that bay there i believe we've got one aim 120d on it our aircraft is going to fly at the maximum speed and altitude that it possibly can in the sim anyway just over 60,000 feet at a speed of well this is mach 2.5 i'm not convinced the raptor can do 2.5 i think it's well, less than that but anyway uh, so that's what we're going to do and the baddie is going to be the second largest cross-section aircraft that we have without triggering people and that is the c5 galaxy flying at its altitude limit and its maximum speed that it can do at the altitude so everything is optimized as best we can for this particular missile 
Some missiles we choose different target drones because that will allow us to achieve our longest fire ring range and that will depend on the missile. We obviously do a bit of you know background testing. In terms of the limiting factor, what's going to be the limiting factor of an M120D? Will it be battery life? Will it be legs? Will it be radar track? I, well, let's go find out, shall we? Save and off we go. Full power. Let's maximize everything. This uh, altimeter is barometric. It's not as accurate as the uh, uh, the game engine, which I can get up there. There you go, true speed. Right, uh, let's get everything set up. So arm the missile, VVR, radar on, being set up. Out to 160. Now here's an interesting thing. The la largest range we can actually scan or display on the Raptor is 160 nautical miles with our radar. Now the real A120D will have data link capability. We can fire it with, with someone else's lock on the target through the data link, link 16 and whatnot. We can't do that in DCS. It's a limitation of DCS at the moment. So we are using our own radar to track this. Off we go. It's a very powerful AESA radar in this aircraft. There. Shoot. Oh, fire. Is that, is that the missile now? Yes, it was. Look at that. And the bay came open. How cool is that? Pretty cool. Uh, that looks just like an AIM-120C to me, but it does say AIM-120D. Let's go and check out. That was the most I could fire it at. And the limiting factor in this case, interestingly, was the maximum display on the radar screen, essentially. It looked like the radar could actually track the target further away if we had a bigger radar, longer radar screen. Uh, which I find very interesting. That is officially da, 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 <laughs> one nautical mile more than the R-37. That is going to trigger some Russians, I'm afraid, but it was a fair test done with the same everything. So anyway, we've got to go and see if the missile actually hits, you know, battery life, terminal phase, all that stuff. We've got to go and check. So up we go. Now, interestingly, the motor's already burnt out, but it's continuing to accelerate, which is obviously not realistic as far as I'm aware. Four and a half thousand knots at 80,000 feet. 5,000 knots at 90,000 feet. 6,000 knots at 110,000 feet. 7,000 knots at just under 7,000 knots at 125,000 feet. Uh, bearing in mind that Mach, Mach is air pressure dependent. If you guys can tell me what 6.9 thousand knots is at break uh 125,000 feet i'd love to know what mark we've got here obviously it's not realistic they've had to fudge it um to get roughly the right range but there you go that's how it is one and we're cruising here at 143,000 feet 144,000 feet we're pretty much in space as far as i care look at that you can see the edge of the world up here beautiful and it is curved i have to say it's flying a very odd angle of attack a very odd minus angle of attack like minus 30 degrees angle of attack which is very odd i was missed the target i was not expecting that right it's missed the target i'm gonna guess oh that's very odd value viewers 156,000 feet that was, and we've got Mark 11, 6,900 TAS at 120,000 feet is Mark 11 according to the conversion. Wow, look at it, it's going back up again. Um, this is just interesting at this point. I did not expect it. To space and beyond. Now, is there? Did you put a satellite up there? No, Bart Simba, uh, you've done more testing on this than me. Um, why did that happen? And how did you have that the happen? Pause? No. I did not pause it. No, Simba. It missed. If you haven't noticed, it missed the target. I did not miss in testing. Right. So what on earth happened there? I'm just going to see how far it's going. Let me just make sure I'm actually tracking still. Yeah, I'm tracking. Well, I guess we follow it, Valid viewers. I wasn't expecting this. I'm not going to lie. Are we now doing a maximum altitude of DCS test? Well, apparently. I mean, I wonder why it's doing this. Oh no, it's leveling off now, look. Even though it's got the speed, but... Yeah, it got to 137,000. Right, that didn't work, Valley Viewers, and I wasn't expecting that. I guess we go try it again? Simba's saying because I paused it to check that the missile came out, maybe I upset it. Aim 120 Delta not playing ball currently. Shoot, shoot. 
157! 157! Over. 157.3, I think I logged. My god, that's a fast jet. Mac 2.5, baby. We watch again. Speed through this time. Got the same speed and same altitude. It's doing its weird negative. Um, I think it's overshooting because I'm over speeding. It's, it's got its weird negative 30 degrees angle of attack. Make sure I'm tracking. And I am. Haha, <laughs> they're bullying you. Someone's bullying on the stream, Simba. Oh my god. Oh. Looks like you were right, Simba. Looks like you were right, sir. Interestingly, because it has a relatively small warhead, it hasn't actually done any damage. Those R-37 and the AIM-54 Phoenix have got fucking great warheads, and they just crumple this plane. But look, the 70-pound warhead, or whatever it is in that Delta variant, hasn't even scratched this plane. And this plane is not invincible, so that's... Oh, it's lost an engine! I take that back. Lost an engine. But he's still flying. But anyway, it would have stopped his mission anyway. So, valued viewers, the King is now the AIM-120D Fox 3 range in DTS of 157 nautical miles, the limiter being the actual radar display, weirdly enough. That's a problem I never thought I would have, but there you go. Now, is that one realistic? I don't think so. Wikipedia says it's about 100 nautical miles the range, and the max speed is Mach 4. Well, we got a max speed of what we think is Mach 11, and a range of about 60% more than the uh, Wikipedia quote. So, I don't know. You know, I, I, I don't really know, as you are all fully aware, but it seems a bit silly, that one. But let me know your thoughts anyway. Uh, that's what it is in DCS, at least. Simba, any thoughts? Yay, NATO! <sighs> See you later.